Now, let's turn to an astonishing story. The massive volcanic blast last year in Tonga in the Pacific. It was felt 18,000 kilometres away on the other side of the world on the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. It was one of a number of intriguing phenomena picked up by the instrument network set up by scientists in the Azores, Madeira and Canary Islands region. Well, Anna Ferreira is the professor of seismology at UCL and the principal investigator of this study. Anna, welcome here to the programme. I mean, firstly, that is absolutely incredible, isn't it? 18,000 kilometres away? Yes, absolutely. We were really thrilled when we saw these signals. They were uh, quite unexpected, really. So uh, it's it's absolutely thrilling. Uh, and not the main purpose at all of our study, which was to record and study earthquakes. Tell me more then about the unexpected nature. So this, this signal particularly is very unexpected because we did record the seismic waves that propagated through the interior of the Earth, that's expected. But then there were these very you know, interesting and very unique waves in the atmosphere uh, following the massive explosion. And we recorded those uh, wa waves as they then you know, went into the water and then to the seafloor. So five kilometers deep into the water on the other side of the Earth uh, from the explosion. So really quite spectacular. T tell me a little more scientifically what was going on, why a volcano like this could, could then end up uh, with your uh, instruments picking up activity on the floor of the Atlantic? Yes. So this was a very unique event because it was a massive explosion. So uh, in, in our century, it's really the biggest one that we have, ha have ever had. Had. Uh, historically, there was the Krakatoa explosion that was uh, some, somehow similar, but you know, in the 19th century. So with modern in instrumentation is the first time that we pick up such a massive explosion. And then the explosion, so a big bang, really, uh, so lava coming up from the seafloor, um, so it was a submarine eruption. It, it created these massive waves. You can imagine like a massive uh, stone being thrown to a pond that makes this big blast that creates uh, oceans, uh, uh, waves in the the atmosphere and also in the solid earth. Those waves in the atmosphere, they traveled all around the earth many times and they were so powerful. Uh, so there was, these were pressure waves that as they passed through, uh, above the ocean, they also propagated into the water. And then because our instruments are very sensitive, extremely sensitive in the seafloor, they could pick up these motions uh, at such depths. Yeah. As you were describing it, we were seeing the pictures of the volcanic blast. I mean, it is extraordinary, exactly as you describe it. I mean, is there any sort of uh, way to, to quantify the energy that was actually released here? So, yeah, so there have been uh, several studies um, uh, using other types of data. So we are talking about, you know, over it displayed over 10 cubic kilometers of rock, ash and sediment. So that's the sort of size that we are talking about. Uh, but we hope that with our data, we can even get further constraints on what happened. And in terms of those shockwaves that uh, you were describing going through the Earth's crust, I, I mean, how fast were they, they moving? How long did it take to get to the other side of the world? Yes. So the atmospheric waves, they were slow. So they were going at, you know, typical sound speeds. So a few uh, hundred meters per second. So they were slow. They came, you know, several hours after the actual seismic waves. The seismic waves, they propagated at the typical um, wave speeds of, you know, a few kilometers per second. So faster. Just a final question then. I mentioned in the introduction that uh, uh, these instruments, they picked up other phenomena as well. Just uh, take me through that. We've got about a minute left on the programme. What else did you find? Lots of lots and lots and lots of whales singing and chatting with each other. Uh, and it was actually fascinating to see the dominant signal of whales really very, very strongly with a seasonal dependency. So appearing very strong, strongly in the winter in particular. This is linked with migration of whales in the region. So this was really fascinating. Lots of ships as well. This is this region is a highway uh, going from Europe to uh, North America and vice versa. Uh, but in particular, also a sinking, exploding ship. So there was a ship full of luxury cars like Lamborghinis and others uh, near the Azores that sank. And we really recorded quite nicely the explosions and the signals of that um, uh, of that sinking ship. So whoever wants to venture can go and try to pick them up from the <laughs> seafloor. Anna, your enthusiasm is obvious, but I'm going to have to stop you because we've got to take a break. But uh, thank you so much for joining us here on BBC News. Thank Thanks you. so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.